Rift TV sótti málfingið upprannandi meistarar eða Emerging Masters sem haldið var til heiður Marsjan Satrapi á Sólum. Marsjan er fættur í 1969 og ólstið býtið heran í Íran. Þar gekk hún í franskan mentaskóla en hjælt áfram námi sínu í vín. Hún flyttist til Frakklands árið 1994 þar sem hún gaf út myndasöguna Persepolis. Persepolis var setna gera teiknumynd og var það Marsjan sjálf sem leikstýrði henni á samt Vincent Paramount. Þessa sögu byggir Marsjan á uppvakstar árum sínum og gerist á tímum íslömsku byltingarinnar. Myndin fekk góðar viðtökur og var tilnefnd til Golden Globe og Óskarsvelluna. Hún hjælt á fram kvikmyndastörfum sínum og árið 2011 sýndu Marsjan og Vincent aðra mynd á hvítatjaldinu Chicken with Plums sem einnig sækir innblastur sinn til Írans séð frá sjónarhorni fjölskyldu Marsjan. The graphic novel Persepolis by Marsjan Satrapi on her childhood in Iran and Austria has received considerable international acclaim. It tells of the childhood and youth of Satrapi in Iran around the time of the 1978 revolution, its aftermath and the war with Iraq, when her parents sent her away to a school in Vienna. But there she ends up an outsider and returns home a few years later where she tries to understand what's happened to her country and to herself and then emigrates to France in her early 20s. I don't consider my work to be a work of autobiography because normally for to me, an autobiography is a book uh, that you write because you hate your family and your friends <laughs> and you don't know how to say it to them, so you write a book and like that you say them to, in an indirect way. But I have to write a story for this uh, simple reason that I was just completely fed up and I was completely bored by all these ideas that people they had about my country because uh, human beings are like that. The less we know about something and the more convinced we are about things. The more we know and the more we know that we don't know, so they would become, we become more humble. So they didn't know, they saw some show on the television and they decided the Iranian, they were that. And you know, it was some producer that proposed to me to make some film and really making films is lots of lots of trouble comparing to what I do normally. That means when I write or when I draw or when I do anything like that, I don't have anybody uh, behind my head who pushes me to do something because there is no money involved. You started out as a graphic novelist. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how your transition into filmmaking began? Uh, it was a coincidence, like uh, already starting, you know, making comics was a coincidence. It happened that I was in the studio with some uh, cartoonist and uh, like, like I wanted to make like my friends, so I became a cartoonist. And then that was a friend of mine who wanted to become a producer and uh, he proposed me to make an adaptation of Persepolis, which I did, and then I fall in love with cinema. You know, like I don't have any special plan for my career. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I do things uh, until the time that I think that they are fun to do. And if I don't have fun anymore, then I don't do it anymore. And then I change. But for me, all, all uh, sorts of expression, uh, they fit me. So until it's exciting and until it's challenging, I'm always open to try anything new. Uh, your film Persepolis has been very well received uh, and has gotten a lot of attention, especially in the Western society. Do you think it will reduce prejudice against the Middle East? Uh, no, I don't think so, because uh, the way of the media is so huge. The way the information is treated is in a way that I don't think that with one single movie I can change the, the, the vision of the world about the thing. If I, I can make people ask themselves questions, even just one or two of them, this is enough. But you know, artists, they have to remain humble. With art, you cannot change the world at all. You know, that is Marilyn Monson in Bowling for Columbine. He say, if music could change everything, anything in life, everybody should be in love because most of, some of the music is I love you and these things. So, you know, it doesn't. So I don't think I can change something, but maybe a little bit. Uh, do you think bad economy has more good effects than bad on upcoming filmmakers? 
I think bad economy has bad effects. I am very much in the material, uh, the dialectic materialism. I think economy changed our society. You know, people always they talk about the 60s and the 70s as the moment of glory that everybody was free and happy. That was because economy was good. So people, they were not scared. You know, all this conservatism, all this going back, you know, to the value and everything like that is because we, people, they are very scared of their future. And so the bad economy is not good for nothing. I think, uh, you know, we always talk, you know, about, you know, I don't know, human rights and these things. Human rights is possible to talk about it if people, they are not hungry, for example. If you are hungry, I don't, don't have a decent house. How do you ask yourself the question, question about the human rights, you know, because your only problem is that you're hungry. So I think we have to have a decent life for everyone. And after that, we can talk about peace and about everything like that. So I think we need to have a good and sane economy for everyone. Yes. Uh, do you have a message for uh, upcoming filmmakers? Uh, no, not really, because I think that I'm an upcoming filmmaker myself. I think, uh, I think the only thing that counts in art is to work. You know, you can have the biggest talent possible if you don't work, is lost. The only thing to do is to work, 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 and work again. Okay, thank you and have a nice day in Reykjavik. Thank you. It is great to be in Reykjavik.